As I offloaded the last of our belongings from the moving truck, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief. It had been a long few weeks packing up our old house and getting everything ready for the move. Now, standing in front of our new home, I couldn't have been happier. It was perfect. Exactly what we'd been looking for. My little boy and girl were running around in the yard, playing with each other and laughing. After my wife had died, it was moments like these that I cherished the most. As I watched them, my daughter suddenly stopped and looked toward the house next door. Daddy, who's that? She asked, pointing at the house. I followed her gaze and saw a young girl standing in the window, staring back at us. She looked sickly and her skin was a yellow hue with yellow eyes. I smiled and waved, but she didn't respond. Instead, she stared at me happily with a strange smile on her face, for a reason I couldn't quite figure out. I wasn't really sure why she seemed to be so eager, but she stared at me with a grin smiling on her face. Maybe she was just excited to play with the new kids on the block, I told myself. That's the neighbor's daughter. Maybe you can go over and introduce yourself later. My daughter nodded and went back to playing with her brother. I didn't think much of it then, but I should have in retrospect. Especially because the neighbor's house was vacant, as I would realize when I saw the for sale sign in the yard a while later. A few days later, as I was unpacking boxes in the living room, I heard my son running down the stairs. He eagerly asked me if he could go play outside. As soon as I had told him yes, he darted out the door and was away before I could ask him my next question. Where was my daughter? The two children usually hung out closely and were inseparable, so I wondered where she was. Sighing, I got up and walked up the stairs to go find my daughter and see what she had gotten up to. I looked in her bedroom, but she wasn't there. Then I checked the bathroom, but she wasn't there either. Where could she be? I was starting to feel a little worried, so I went to check my son's room to see if she was in there. Nope, she wasn't in there either. I was starting to panic and had already reached the stairs before I heard a noise. I heard her voice. Running from room to room, I followed the sound of her talking before I realized where it was coming from. The open attic door. I slowly walked up to the door and peeked inside. My daughter was sitting in the middle of the room, talking to someone in the dark, but I didn't see anyone. Who are you talking to, sweetie? Daddy, come here. Say hello to my new friends. She pointed in the direction of the dark attic. As I stared into the darkness, I dismissed her words as the product of an overactive imagination. But then I saw it, and I felt my heart leap into my throat. Three pairs of eyes stared at me from the darkness of the attic. Three human pairs of eyes. Anna, listen to me. I need to talk to your friends. Go downstairs right away. Okay, Daddy. I tried to keep my voice from being panicked, but I was terrified. What were three people doing in our attic, and how long had they been there? I waited until I heard Anna running down the stairs before I began to slowly back up. I would call the police as soon as I had gotten out of the house. But as I retreated toward the attic doorway, I saw the three pairs of eyes grow nearer to me. They were following me. I was about a yard or two from the door when I turned and began to run. I heard their feet pounding the floor behind me as they chased me. I was about to reach the door when I felt something grab my ankle, tripping me. I fell hard and hit my head on the floor. As I drifted into unconsciousness, I heard the footsteps getting closer to me. I woke up and jumped back involuntarily. I was bound to a chair, and just a few inches from my face was one of the most disturbing faces I had ever seen. A thin, hollow face with sunken, sickly yellow eyes and yellow teeth bared at me in a grin. What the heck do you want? Food. It was just one word, but it was enough to send a chill down my spine. The man in front of me, his hair long and tangled, yet sickly thin, pointed toward me with a bony finger. Food! He repeated the word, but suddenly I understood. He wasn't just saying the word, he meant me. 
The hunger in his eyes was too much to bear, and I couldn't help but cry out in terror. Please, no. Please don't eat me. But it was too late. The man lunged forward, his teeth sinking into my flesh. I screamed and writhed in pain as he tore a chunk off my arm, wildly grinning as he held the flesh in his hands. He gestured toward me. Food! And the two other pairs of eyes emerged from the darkness, their sickly skin similar to that of the man who was devouring my arm. They began to advance on me as I screamed and begged for mercy. Suddenly, however, I heard sirens from outside. The police had arrived. The three figures in the attic froze and then scattered like rats, running in different directions. I was found bleeding and barely conscious, but I survived. The police never did catch the three people who attacked me, but they did have previous information about them. Apparently these people had lived in the walls in the attic of the house I had bought, and had since been connected to a string of disappearances in the area. Apparently, they moved from house to house, living in the walls, the attics, or even abandoned houses in the area. They would live in houses that were for sale and wait for newcomers to fall into their trap. I was lucky to be alive, but I will never forget the hunger in their eyes. I owe my life to my daughter. She was smart enough to run and call the police, but I will never forget the terror I felt when I realized that these people were after me. It's just something to think about, isn't it? Sometimes I wake up in a cold sweat, convinced I saw their eyes in my dream. The worst part about it is that sometimes, on very rare occasions, I think I can see their sickly yellow eyes even when I'm not dreaming. The police never did find them after all, and from the look on that crazed face, I think that he really enjoyed the taste of my flesh. Maybe he wants more. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. I inherited my grandmother's old house after she passed away. After a lot of arguments and discussions, my parents permitted me to stay there. The reason they were reluctant at first was because of what happened to my great uncle Frank while he stayed in that house. Uncle Frank was my grandmother's only brother. He and my grandma grew up together. Uncle Frank was a pretty healthy, normal guy. A popular boy in high school, had plenty of friends. Maybe that's why no one saw it coming. Uncle Frank had a crush on a classmate. Her name was May. A day before prom, Uncle Frank finally gathered the courage to ask out May for the prom but May rejected him. This is where the story takes a dark turn. It's said that Uncle Frank didn't handle the rejection well and kidnapped May on prom night. He brought her into this house and took her to the kitchen. While my grandma and her parents slept upstairs, great Uncle Frank severed May's head from her body and ran away. According to the reports of the locals, some anonymous caller told the cops about seeing a teenage boy dressed in a tuxedo jumping off the river bridge. May's headless body was discovered in the kitchen along with a big, bloody kitchen knife, and my uncle's body was never found. No one knows what happened to May's head. The people around the town say my uncle had her head with him while he committed suicide. So, it was more than enough reason for my parents to prevent me from living in that house. But after this incident, my grandmother lived alone in this house. All these years, and not once did she talk about anything weird happening to her. Within a week, I moved into the house. My parents got me some paint and basic repair tools to set up the house. One warm summer afternoon, I was working in the kitchen. I was scraping the dirty paint off the wall when I suddenly heard footsteps behind me. I quickly turned around to see no one. The long, empty hallway stood behind me. I didn't bother. Even though I ignored the footsteps, I couldn't ignore the thud. I grabbed the hammer and headed up. The sound came from my grandma's bedroom. I pushed the door and it opened with a loud creaking sound. The room was in darkness. Even though it was daytime, the big curtains over the windows stopped the light outside from piercing in. Hello? Anyone here? I scanned the room and got sure that no one was there. The rest of the day, the weird feeling of not being alone stayed with me. 
After a tiresome day, I filled myself with leftover lasagna and went to bed. I decided to sleep in my grandma's bedroom as it had the biggest window. I left the window open, curtains are drawn to one corner of the room to cool down. I don't exactly remember the time, but I woke up hearing heavy breathing. The moonlight from the window made the room visible in the dark. As I looked around me, my eyes suddenly noticed the curtains. A head was peeking behind the curtains, looking directly at me. It had wide, glowing eyes and its mouth opened. I've never been that scared in my whole life. Whatever was watching me sleep behind the curtains wasn't supposed to be in my room. The glowing eyes didn't blink. I couldn't scream. All I knew was that I locked my room before coming in, and it was impossible for someone to get in from that window. The creature made a growl and I got back to my senses. I screamed and jumped from the bed. Without wasting a single second, I unlocked the door and ran downstairs. The entire night, I remained awake, sitting in the living room. In the morning, I checked the entire room and didn't find any proof of a third person presence in the house. Soon, I started to believe that the house is probably haunted. I didn't tell my parents anything because I have already invested money in this house and I can't move out. Many times, I've seen in movies that a deceased soul tortures the living because they want to convey a message. Long back, my cousin gave me a Ouija board. I knew it was risky and to some people makes no sense, but that evening I sat down in my grandma's room to get some answers. I turned all the lights of the shadow, lit up the candles, and started the seance. Is anyone here? My voice trembled. Except for the hooting owl and crickets outside, I heard nothing. The wind around the house never felt this heavy before. I sat in the dark, waiting for something supernatural to happen, thinking that the malevolent entity that visited me last night might reappear to give its message. Maybe it's the unfulfilled spirit of May who was murdered in this house at the prom night. Minutes went by and nothing happened. I was all set to give up when I watched the closet door open. A clattering sound came from inside, and then I saw the entity from last night. An average height human figure, extremely skinny like it was only made of bones coming out of the closet. It walked like a four-legged animal. The sight gave me chills. I was going to scream when I noticed the dark figure with glowing eyes holding something in its hand. As it surfaced into the dim candlelight, I found out what it was holding. A human skull. Suddenly, the creature ran to me at full speed. I screamed, and it lunged at me, making me fall on the floor. I turned on the flashlight of my phone, and at last, got a good look at the creature. It was a miserable, creepy-looking old man. Oh my god! Who are you? The man looked at me in the eyes and said in a groggy voice, Where is my sister? Who... who is your sister? Uh, Matilda. Matilda was my grandmother's name. The mystery of the haunted house became clear in front of my eyes. This man is none other than my great uncle Frank. I pushed him over and he fell on the ground making a painful grunt. I ran out of the room and locked it behind me. I called my parents and they called the cops. A decades-old murder investigation finally reached its end. Great Uncle Frank was finally put behind bars for the murder of May Summers, his high school crush. He admitted that after killing May and was caught by my grandma in the act. But what shocked the hell out of all of us was the fact that grandma, instead of calling the cops, hit his brother in the attic. Once the case turned cold, she built a secret space behind the walls of her bedroom where Uncle Frank stayed all these years. She was the anonymous caller who misled the entire investigation to save her brother. It creeps me out to think that till her death, she shared the house with her killer brother, who lived in the walls and kept his victim's skull as an asset. Yes, that skull belonged to May Summers. Great Uncle Frank died in jail two years after getting caught. We demolished the house and sold it to a proprietor of a law firm. I now live in my own house with my girlfriend, but often at night I wake up having bad dreams. In my dreams, I see my uncle standing near my bed and staring at me with his flowing eyes and wide open mouth. 
For as long as I can remember, I have always been a person who cherishes my freedom. While other people my age were happy with the comfort of living with their parents, I fantasized about living on my own from a very young age. While some people fantasized about dream jobs, fame, and money, all I wanted was to stand on my own two feet. My father passed away when I was very young, so from then on it was just me and my mother. We had no family or contact with anyone else, it was just the two of us. This would normally form a great bond between me and her, but to tell the truth, the opposite happened, as she was a monster. My mother always mistreated me and forbid me to have friends or talk to women. I'm not going to lie to you, I had a very complicated childhood, but luckily everything was over because when I was 21 years old, I was moving to a new house. My problems started in the middle of the move. You would think that with such a bad relationship with my mother, I wouldn't talk to her anymore the moment I stepped foot out of the house. But it wasn't like that. Growing up with her, it was very hard for me to lose contact. I wanted to keep her in my life, but she was acting very strangely and unnaturally, even for her. Mom, you didn't have to come with me. I could have invited you after I moved out. Oh, but I did. I could never leave my only son alone. Okay. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome, son. You know I'll always be there for you. Whatever I lived through with her, my mother never made me feel this way. It was as if she had stopped being my mother and had become a character in a horror movie. Always staring at me with a creepy smile, constantly moving her fingers as if she was up to something. She was making me feel very uncomfortable. Maybe she was having a psychotic break. When the move was done, she had to go back to work so I could finally have some peace and enjoy being alone. I laid down, closed my eyes, and without rearranging the furniture, I fell asleep. My sleep in my new home was suddenly interrupted. I didn't know the sounds of this house yet, but I remember that was the intruder alarm. I approached the front door, but it was locked. No one had entered. Was it failing? Hello, we just noticed that your alarm went on. Is everything okay? Yeah, it was a mistake. Please tell me your password. Apple 3223. Thank you. As soon as I cut the call, another strange noise caught my attention. This time, it was coming from my room. Had some boxes fallen down. I thought about calling the operator again, but it didn't make sense. I knew I was being paranoid. I've never lived alone. Strange noises and unwarranted fear is normal, right? I nervously walked to my room and to my surprise, my fears had been justified. Someone was crouched down next to the bed with his back towards me. I was about to quickly call 911, but that person revealed her face. Mom, what are you doing here? What a nice house you picked out for us. This will be our room. <laughs> what? M Mom, I'm going to live here by myself. How did you get in? <laughs> you will never live alone. A son always needs his mother. You'll never get rid of me. <laughs> You'll never get rid of me. You will never get rid of me. I didn't know what was going on, but that wasn't my mother. I ran out of the room and closed the door. Luckily, I still had the keys in my pocket, so while whoever that person was banging on the door, I managed to lock it. After that, I just walked backward and, terrified, stood there watching the door take more and more knocks until suddenly, it opened. Mom knows better! Ah! Hey, you woke up. Are you okay? What happened? Mom? I'm home. You have no idea what a nightmare I had. I dreamt that I moved out, but that a demon version of you replaced you, and her face started to melt, and... <sighs> oh my god, what a real and terrible nightmare. 
Oh, sweetie, stay calm. That will never happen. You will never move out. What? What am I doing here? I was really moving out. That wasn't a dream. You see, son, I called the realtor. You can't move in. You need someone to take care of you after your accident. Accident? What? I'm really sorry about what happened. The fact that I was driving makes it so much worse. But I'll make up for my mistake, my baby. I'll take care of you forever. A child always needs its mother. But when I recover, I can just go, won't I? I think you're still in shock, silly. You're missing the point. You'll never get better. Not as long as I'm alive. Shocked. I couldn't scream or fight. I just stared at the wall without understanding what was happening. Eventually, I understood that my mom was right. I was never going to be able to live alone. I was never going to be able to be calm. There were no relatives to rescue me, and we lived in the middle of nowhere. No one could hear my screams. Most of the time, I was either dozed or crying. It was really a dead end. Today, I have something similar to a normal life. I finally live alone. But that cost me more than 30 years of my life. My mother is no longer with us, but I still see her in my nightmares. Every day I dream that I'm young again. I dream that I can live a normal life. But she is always back, ready to torment me until the end of my life.